Hi, I'm Lizzie Tremaine. I'm the author of the Odin in Lockdown series and a lot of other books. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to make homemade cooked Play-Doh. It's better than anything you can buy. And if you keep it in the fridge, it can last for quite some time. So to start this, the recipe is in the back of the Odin in Lockdown series books in some of them. Um, and to make this, you will need two cups of flour. I already measured these out and put them in containers, so I know that I have all the ingredients. One cup of salt. You don't need to sift these. Four teaspoons of cream of tartar. You can just mix it in the pan. You don't even need to make another messy bowl. And the four table, two, sorry, two tablespoons of vegetable oil and two cups of water. So I take a wooden spoon, which I here, have right here. So, so you can just stir this on the bench. It'll be a bit lumpy and it doesn't matter because once it starts to heat up, it will all smooth out. Some recipes have you add the food coloring now, but what I like to do is to make a batch and then make smaller parts of it into different colors. Okay, so then we will take this over to the stove. So you'll need an adult to help you with this um, so that you don't burn yourself or burn the house down. Always a good thing. Okay, and we'll go over to the stove now. Okay, so now we will put this on the stove and turn it on to a good medium heat. And then we start stirring. Make sure you have an adult to help you with this, please. So it's very important not to stop stirring because it will turn into glue on the bottom. So you just have to be a little bit patient. Once it heats up, it will start to thicken. And when it thickens, you just keep stirring and keep stirring. It'll turn into a, a lump, like um, if you've done this before, a chook's pastry. I may not have said that right. C-H-O-U-X. It's what they use to make profiteroles and eclairs. So if you can make this, you can probably make eclairs. I'm just going to leave the the video running because I want you to have an idea of how long it actually takes. I really enjoy cooking. I hope you like cooking too because it's lots of fun and you end up with good things to eat. So you can, while you're waiting for this to cook, you can start thinking about what, oh, it's starting to thicken now. I can feel it getting thicker on the bottom of the spoon. You have to keep scraping off the bottom. You can start thinking about the colors you might like to make. You can make them from the primary colors. I have yellow, blue, maybe red. And I also have green, which is a color, a combination of two primary colors already, isn't it? Yellow and blue make green. See, it's starting to thicken. Again, just like with the last recipe that we put together, you want to make sure that your hair is tied back if you have long hair and that your sleeves are pulled up and that you don't get too close to the flames if you have a gas stove. It's starting to get thick. It gets very hard by the time you're done. You might need a grown-up to take the spoon at the end because it gets very hard and you can't stop. See, it's getting thick, turning into big lumps. Now, this has a lot of salt in it, so I would not advise tasting it because it's very, very salty. The salt does a few things. One, it keeps you from eating it, probably a good one, but also um, bacteria and other microorganisms don't survive well in a lot of salt, which is why they used to make salt pork 
and why you make jams and jellies with sugar with high concentrations of sugar like we've used a high concentration of salt because it actually dehydrates the little microorganisms and makes them die sometimes you have to shake your hand out a little bit it does start getting very hard I'm scraping it off the sides as I go you can practice this with some with your sand pit toys with some sand and water. There, it's starting to get hard. You keep going until it turns into one solid thing following around. I'm not very good with my left hand, but lets my right one have a rest. Come on. It gets harder and harder. very hard and soon it turns into one big lump it's very very hard to stir you will need a grown-up to help you with this I suspect okay so once it's hard like this it's basically done see it's pulling away from the edges it's turning into one lump okay should sort of follow your spoon around is the idea but it's too hard to do that with there we go all right so that means it's basically finished okay there so and we're going to take it over to the bench see it's following the spoon it's called following the spoon around all right so we'll turn this off take it off the heat and we'll take it over to the bench we take it and dump it out on the bench, falls out in one lump like that. See, you can scrape our, the rest of it out. There we go. Now, it's very hot, so you might have to let this wait for a few minutes. But I like to get into it as quickly as I can. So you need it, okay? So it's quite hot. So if you can do it fast, you can do this. Otherwise, let it sit for a little while. It's quite hot. But as you do this, it gets very rubbery and Play-Doh-like. So the more you knead it like this, the better it gets. So that's how you need. You press, pull it back to you. Press again, pull it back to you. Twist it, press, pull it back, press, twist it, pull it back, twist. So this is how you make bread as well. So just do this till it starts to be handleable. Some people wait for a little while. It's smart with you guys. Please do wait while it's cool, till it cools off. Okay, so now I'm going to make some yellow and some green and some blue and some sort of red. So I will, I'm happy with how smooth this is now. See, it's lovely and soft, just like Play-Doh, okay? It is your Play-Doh that you've made yourself, okay? The only really hard part about this is when it's just about cooked and it's in the pan. So I'm going to split this into half, okay? And then I'm gonna split those in half again. Use my hand as a knife, okay? This one's a little bit bigger. Okay, right, and then make a little well in the middle of each of these, a little thumb well. Okay, and then I'm gonna put just a little bit, this one's gonna be red, just literally a few drops, that's heaps. That's way much. Okay, and a little bit of blue in this one. Oh, they're very tight. Oops. Something to hold this and open it with. Got that. Okay, just a few drops. It's easier if it's in a dropper bottle, but these don't come like that. And yellow. 
So there's our primary colors. And then to put them together, you just close them over and start kneading again. Okay, and you'll see the whole thing change color. Now be careful if you're doing this on a board or something because it will dye the board into that color. So that's a sort of a light blue, pale blue, but you can keep keep kneading that and it'll get um, to be a more even color. This one's yellow, but I've got a little blue on my fingers, so it's gonna get a little bit greeny possibly. I should have started with the yellow. Okay. Go and there's our yellow, and here is our. It's going to come out some kind of pinky ready something. I've been kneading bread since I was very small, so this takes a bit of practice. But the more you do it, the better you get. And so there's our pinky ready sort of one. And to make green, we can either blend some yellow and some blue to make green. Or we can use green food coloring. They will give slightly different colors based on how much food coloring there is in there. So this makes a sort of a turquoisey pick color. Okay, so that was by combining those two, we made that. And if you combine a bit of yellow and a bit of pink, what do you think you'll get? Maybe orangish. I think we need more yellow to make orange, so it needs a lot of yellow and only a little bit of red. But it gets a bit orangey. See, and that's the colors that we get from mixing those two. Okay, so interesting. And then we can just leave this white if we want. So there we have a bunch of different colored Play-Doh. So just like those, and if you have some Play-Doh containers, you can actually put them in your Play-Doh containers and make them go a little longer. Okay, so there is your Play-Doh. Now you know how to make Play-Doh. Have fun. Take care.